Hello, this is a demo of a little project that I've been working on for a little while. A um, renderer slash graphics library built off of OpenGL that I've kind of been using as a way of just learning more about various rendering techniques and uh, yeah, just spending some of my free time. And yeah, I was going to just go through some of the major features of this little thing. And um, I'll also link to the actual source code uh, in case you happen to be interested in any of that. To get started, this is the kind of main model renderer uh, that I've built as part of the app. It's, it features most of the uh, systems that the library provides, but not all. Um, but uh, let's just start going through them, I guess. So. Uh, this UI over here is just built off of imgui, uh, which is a fantastic library with some extra plugins. Um, some basic things like rotation. Um, there's a light representation, which there will be more options about later that we can adjust here. Um, standard model scale, uh, nothing too big there. Good one. And uh, I'll go through some of the more boring things really quickly. Um, under performance, uh, pretty easily hitting 60 frames per second on with VSync enabled. Disabling that um, increases quite a bit. This is actually not very great at all, though, for us, you know, the the notorious damaged helmet model, uh, because it's largely the only thing being rendered, you know, besides all the other effects and post processing. Um, I have not spent any effort on performance, so that's to be expected. Uh, that being said, moving on, there's a few camera controls. Uh, the default orbit controls are here, uh, which are useful for actually viewing a model. The, there's also you know free flying if desired. Um, orbit controls are good. And now into the meat of it, which is uh, the actual rendering features. So this is basically what I've been spending most of the time on, trying to uh, just implement various interesting um, rendering techniques. So the library does support um, kind of your typical uh, light formats, uh, directional point lights and spotlights. Uh, this demo app only really just has the directional one just because I haven't gotten around to implementing support for um, like controls for, for the other light types, uh, like location, movement, and whatnot. But um, yeah, the directional one in general, um, this is right now based on the a, a physically based Cook Torrents model. Um, you know, kind of behaves as you would expect for a directional light. Um, there's some shadow mapping happening, as you can probably tell, and pretty straightforward there. Uh, there's some emission lights, which this model uh, conveniently has in the form of the decals on the helmet. Um, Increasing intensity there can lead to some cool effects, um, and and then shadow mapping. So this is just a representation of the shadow map. Um, disabling it removes all the shadows. Uh, it's much more clear if you have any sort of geometry below the kind of main model um, to be able to to see more of the shadow itself. But um, this reacts to the Directions light as expected. The mechanism is extremely simple here. Uh, the it's in fact it's it's very inflexible at the moment, but um, it is it is doing a little bit of uh, percentage closer filtering uh, to just try to smooth out the edges a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, there's it, it could use a lot of work there, but that's that's the shadow aspect. Um, the most recent thing that I did was setting up uh, image-based lighting for the system, which uh, makes a huge difference, I find. Um, so this is going back to the directional light. Um, when you remove basically all the ambient kind of calculations from the image-based lighting, this is what you are left with. Um, so IBL, the, the IBL here is bit built off of the uh, kind of split sum approximation used by Unreal 4. 
um, which essentially takes the environment map. Uh, this is pretty pretty standard technique. Takes the environment map, um, which is HDR an HDR image, and uh, splits it up into an irradiance map that it can cal uh, calculate in, into into a cube map, uh, as well as a pre-filtered um, specular reflection uh, environment map with multiple MIP levels. And then it just at runtime combines these two sources to calculate the diffuse and specular components of the ambient light, uh, respectively. And uh, you get some neat effects. So this is when when I switched the skybox there, it performed the actual pre-filtering at runtime, um, just for convenience. Um, and yeah, you can get some neat effects here. Then there's uh, some screen space ambient occlusion that's happening. Um, this is the occlusion map that's being generated at runtime. Pretty basic, but uh, has a, a has a neat subtle effect. Uh, this actual model happens to have its own occlusion maps in general, uh, and so the 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 two values are essentially just being combined. Um, and then finally, some proposed processing effects. So there's Bloom, which is based on the uh, technique published by Call of Duty um, in a SIGGRAPH presentation. Uh, that essentially just works by taking the HDR image uh, at the end of the, the render stage and downsampling and upsampling with specific kernels um, over several MIP levels. Um, and you get this like you know amplification effect, and then you can choose the the mix factor here. Uh, it gets very very bright, uh, you know, if you take more than a little bit. But it can have a very nice effect otherwise. And just various tone mapping uh, functions. The you know the classics, uh, Reinhard, Aces, and uh, there's an AMD one that is pretty interesting. Um, it it has some like color vibrancy, but also it it has some interesting effects around color crosstalk. If you happen to have very bright light sources that are monochromatic, um, it it looks more correct in terms of how, especially in terms of how like bloom effects. Um, can occur after the fact, and then this is a deferred shader uh just uh, as again as part of the practice around uh playing around with this library and so unfortunately one you know downside of different shading is it's you know simple anti-aliasing becomes significantly harder um and so like up here you can tell there's a little bit of aliasing happening um so the engine does have some fxaa support uh, very basic, very very easy post-process effect that kind of smudges things out a little bit and improves the overall look. And just for comparison, I've loaded another model into the viewer here, uh, Artorius. And on the topic of deferred rendering, we can actually take a look at the individual layers of the G buffer here. Uh, we have positions, which you don't actually need to store. You can uh, resolve them from the depth information, uh, but this was simple to do as an initial implementation. Um, and then you just have the other layers of the G buffer, uh, the, the actual normals, uh, which is taken from a normal map, um, roughness, uh, material properties, you know, the albedo, metallic, and emission, which he does not have at the moment. Uh, he has not reached phase two of the boss fight. And this uh, probably is also a, another opportunity to show the uh, shadow casting a little bit better. Um, but this is mostly it for now. Um, the render does support a few other features that I didn't show here, like instance rendering or uh, geometry shaders, compute shaders, things of that nature. Um, but this this was the bulk of it. Um, and that's that's about it for now. If you've gotten this far, thanks a lot for watching. And 
best of luck on your own graphics journeys.